What's new? Hmm, nothing you new. Know. Mm -hmm. Still boring Poland. Good. <laughs> what about this weekend? Any plans? Mm, I don't have some any plans. Mm hmm. Hmm. You should plan something. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, a boring weekend. Yes. So I wonder who we're gonna have here today. Ah, wait a minute. It's Heidi's up late, or something. Or I be night owl. Or early. Or, or, I've never seen her at this time. Heidi. Two a.m. Yes. Yeah, very sleepy. <laughs> are you uh, are you awake late or up early? I don't understand. Staying up. Oh wow. So I'm, very very sleepy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, that's not like you. Che Che. So Che Che, Heidi is staying up like you. <laughs> How's it going? I'm going to bed. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Heidi, nice to see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, Che Che, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. How are you? Good. How about you? Good. Good. And uh, we'll see. It may just be the three of us. I don't know. These new Kalinga classes are very, very small. But... Ah, okay. We have a third student. Hello, Liliana. Hi, Anthony. How are you? I'm great. Nice to see you here. <laughs> nice to see you, too. Mm -hmm. What's new? <laughs> no? <laughs> I think I, all, this, all goes well. Uh-huh. That's a... Uh, Seems like a hard question to answer for people. Maybe they don't really want to tell me, or it's just easier to say nothing. Or everyone just has a boring life. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we can put some more folks here. Hello, Julissa. Hi, teacher. How are you? Good. I haven't seen you in a while. What's going on? Uh, everything is good. I'm fine, thank you. Great, great. Nice to see you here. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know why I chose this topic, because it's not even something I know about, but I thought it was important because I'm teaching pop culture, and it seems like nowadays this is the biggest pop culture phenomenon, one of the biggest in the last few years which is reality television, reality TV. You guys watch reality TV sometimes? Mm. I only uh, watched one, one reality, but not anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which one was that? Uh, I think, uh, about, yes, about music. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't remember the right name. Uh, to choose the best uh, yeah. singer. Well, yeah, there's a lot of those, uh, a lot of those uh, talent show, basically, uh, mm -hmm. talent show style um, uh, programs. There's a few different kinds. We have like the ones where it's just people living together, and then there's mm -hmm. the ones where people are, you know, working and doing their job, and you follow them around. And then there's the ones that are like talent shows where people get up on stage and perform and they then the judges vote them out. Those are all reality TV shows and they're everywhere. And every culture I see them now. Those are the big ones, I think. Um, I don't, yeah, I never really watch them, but they're so bizarre to me, very strange. Um, so before we get into the details of it, we can, um, I was gonna ask you guys some questions. Are um, 
our grammar school today is prepositions of place and time. Um, so I was going to ask, um, so Liliana, now what about just for any, any kind of TV, what times, what times of the day do you normally watch uh, television? Uh, at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, my time, uh, I, I, I barely uh, watch TV, <laughs> only maybe one or two uh, programs. That's all. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, a huge fan. I'm not addicted uh, to uh, uh, on watching TV. Okay, so maybe only a couple shows uh, per day, you said? Uh, no, only it's, it's like a um, series uh, about a family uh, who uh, uh, Indian family, mm -hmm. and the other is about an uh, animal plant. It's a mm -hmm. channel, an interesting channel, and uh, I always watch um, the Whisper Whisper Dog, Whisper Dog, Cesar Millan, because uh, I have a dog. And I'm ah, the dog whisperer. Oh, okay. The dog whisperer, and I'm interested yeah. in yeah. learning. I like to, that. Yes, uh, he's he's the best. Uh, yeah, it's like are, a. Yes, I, they are going to try to imitate him. Yeah, so I'm learning a lot from him. Mm -hmm. uh, I like how uh, how they treat uh, dogs are because they uh, sorry he use uh, psychologists to to treat uh, them. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, use, uh, he uses a, a good techniques to train uh, dogs or to understand uh, their behavior. Mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. my favorite program. So I never miss it. <laughs> uh huh. I've never seen it, but I should see it because I love dogs. I have a dog, although yeah. she's pretty well behaved. But yes. I'm sure I could <laughs> I could train her even even better if I yeah had the program. No, my dog is only two years. Mm. He's very active, so I, yeah. I try to use to yes to use one of his techniques, and it works for me. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, great. So uh, I see that uh, Eugenie is uh, Eugenie has joined us. Yes. Hi, teacher. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh huh. And uh, tell us about yourself. Um, my name is Evgeny, I'm from Russia, and I work as a technician by file alarm and security systems. You work at what kind of systems? A file, file alarm and security systems. Ah, okay, file alarm and security systems. Okay, good. And uh, what, uh, what city do you live in? I live in a city, it's about uh, 1,000 kilometers from Moscow. It's not big city, but the population is about one million people. That's a big city. Um, maybe. I don't know, what, but we have um, more more crowded cities than yeah. mine. Oh, I'm curious if I know it, if I've heard of it before. What's the name of it? Toliati. Toliati. Hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> There's a lot of, yeah, there are a lot of, Russia does have a lot of big cities. Yeah. Hmm. So... Interesting. Uh, welcome. Have you been to uh, Have you been to Colingo before? Mm, yes, I I've been I've been at Colingo for about eight months, maybe. Oh, great! I just I don't think we've met. Yeah, it's I guess it's the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so. Uh, uh, great. So, um, and I can ask you, Evgeny, is mm -hmm. um, what uh, what times of the day do you normally watch television? What times of the day? Honestly speaking, I have not watched television for about I don't know four years, maybe. Okay. All right. Well, that's an easy. An that's easier to answer. Than <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really like TV either. Okay. Uh, oh yes, he's in my mom. Um, who's some? Who else? Do we have any TV fans? A lot of you guys watch Kalingo instead of TV, I think. Yeah. Uh, Christoph, are you a TV watcher? 
No, I don't have TV set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me neither. Um, so, Julissa, what about you? Yes, sometimes at night. Uh -huh. I watch, uh, in the evening, there is a TV show. It's a reality uh, TV show mm -hmm. where two teams compete mm -hmm. against each other. They have different uh, obstacles, like games, and there are couples also there. It's kind of fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And then at night, I watch the, the news or some movie. If I find a good movie, I, I, I watch it. Okay. And, but, uh, so what, uh, what times of the day do you normally, like, what, uh, if you can tell me, like, what times are you normally watching? The news uh, at about 10 p.m., 10.30 p.m., mm -hmm. until 11. Then at 11, I'm changing channels to see if there is something good. Mm -hmm. And I watch a little bit, and then I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you one of those people that like to fall asleep to the TV? Yeah, sometimes I put the timer, mm -hmm. just 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and it turns off uh, a lot. Yes, I know some people that like to... They like to fall asleep while watching TV. It's easy for them. Um, uh, good. I've been I've been kind of testing everyone's um, seeing if they can use prepositions in there. When when talking about a period of time, you can say. So Julissa said something about at ten. And then she said until about eleven or something like that. And um, so she's starting to use these prepositions to talking about a, a a length of time from one place from one time to another, just like. Uh, just like you could go uh, from one place to another in your car, and on your bicycle, you can go from one one street to another street. Same thing can happen in time. You can watch television from 10 p.m. until 11 p.m. or midnight or something like that, uh, or until I fall asleep. <laughs> and um, that's kind of one of our... Uh, grammar points today. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess I haven't asked Cheche, so I might as well ask you, Cheche, what do you have any, what about you, what, about, what are your TV watching habits? I don't really, uh, I don't really like watching movie, uh, TV. Mm. I prefer watching movies. Ah, movies, yeah, yeah, me too. I like movies. Uh, although I don't watch them too often. Um, so, um, I was going to talk a little bit about pronouncing um, sentences when introducing new important details. Uh, talking about pausing and, and for emphasis. Um, was anyone in my class where I recently talked about this? Because I did talk about this very recently. Um, I don't want to repeat it for too many people. Um, but talking about like saying like, uh, well, for instance, uh, oops. The, uh, the sentence I just typed in there, if that sentence looks familiar to you. Um, from or, through? And if this is new for you, then we'll talk about it. Uh, you, you can say from uh, through instead of from to. Uh, from, from, from which? I'm sorry, Lily. Uh, yes. Uh, can I say I am from New York, California? Ah, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, yeah, it's a little bit more complex. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's from to and then through afterwards. So we have. Uh, yes, after. Uh -huh. Yep. Three yep. prepositions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, why don't you, um, why don't you um, uh, look at this uh, sentence I typed and and read it for me? Um, uh, Christoph, would you read that sentence? Okay. Tomorrow is a busy day. I'll fly from the New York to California through Chicago. My flights leave by 8 and I'll be on the road until 10. Okay. Uh, good. So, um, uh, make sure if we do... Now, that's not a... That's a really... Uh, that's a really irregular contraction. We don't normally uh, spell out flight like that. 
But if, if it is spelled like that, then we want to um, kind of put it as one word. My flight will leave by 8. My flight will leave by 8. So um, good, though. Um, and so when we're talking, when we're, if we're going to use a sentence like this um, and telling people this uh, new information, we, we automatically kind of put some pauses in this, inside of the, of the sentences so that the listener has time to um, process the new information, okay? So, you know, to, instead of saying, uh, you did well, that was good, that was good, but I'm just going to try to uh, ex uh, expand on this a little. So tomorrow is a busy day. I'll fly from New York to California through Chicago. My flight will leave by 8, and I'll be on the road until 10. So I was... Being, I was exaggerating my pauses there, so just so you can see where the pauses are. Uh, no, I don't. I wouldn't normally talk that slowly. Or put the pauses, or the pauses wouldn't normally that be that long. But I just wanted to give an example of uh, where the pauses were. They kind of be around where these new, these important words are, like words like New York, Chicago. What else? What were some of the words that I paused for? Any other words you heard me? For time, mm -hmm. by eight until ten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought I'll leave by eight, and I'll be on the road until ten. Now, Chris, I'm making an extra long pause, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll often um, emphasize these uh, these uh, these informational uh, information words, and uh, and you can you can emphasize by volume. Uh, or stretching the word out, or putting a pause, and often we do the pause. So, um, so the, in, in doing that, it's easier to understand. Um, so, so yeah. So, does anyone here have any plans for the weekend that they want to tell me about? Um, the weekend? Uh, yes. Uh, Mm. I will uh, teach Spanish class uh, on Sunday uh, from uh, 9 to 10, uh, but I uh, usually uh, finish around 10.30 uh, mm -hmm. p.m. a.m., mm -hmm. sorry. Um, what else? Mm. And I'll... Um, I'll um, Meet some friends uh, around uh, uh, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. That's all. Good. Great. Uh, I got nice, uh, some nice prepositions there too. Right? At around 3 p.m. That's good. These are all prepositions that could be used for a place. I could be hanging around the house, or I could uh, be meeting my friends around you. So that's what our this is the these are the prepositions we're talking about today. Um, so let's uh, look into that a little more. Um, all right. I'm going to share something on the screen that we can look at together. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, good. So, um, Christoph? First, from and whoops, blinking. Did you stop? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's from and to are used for place and time. From is used when talking about origin. I'm from Chile. I'm leaving from my house in 10 minutes. From and to are used when talking about going from on location to another. 
she is driving from home to, to work. Uh, he will travel from Japan to Egypt. Two, he used to refer to the destination when traveling. I will go to Japan. Jack is going to the mall. From and to are used when referring to a start and end point in time. I will be walking from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. tonight. She is in Paris from June to July. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and this, there's, I guess there's two different prepositions we can use here. What would be uh, another word we can also use? Another till. One? Yeah, till. Eight till nine or eight until nine. Both are correct, actually. Um, it's the same word, actually. What's more common mm -hmm. that you use? Or, no, which is actually etymologically incorrect, I think. I just learned that. So um, what would I say? Um, for me, um, as an American, I say whatever is the very easiest to say, because <laughs> Americans are very lazy with language. And so, so whatever, two. Two. Yeah. <laughs> two is even easier than till. So I say, I'll be working from eight to nine, eight to nine. And what's not even two, it's even lazier than that. It's to. <laughs> so I'll be working from eight to nine tonight, if I'm speaking very quickly. Um, or if somebody says, unless, you know, someone asks me, hey, Anthony, when, uh, when do you get off work? When will you be working till? And I'll say, uh, until nine. I might say that. I might, or I get off at nine. That's a really common. So let me just type this. There's a little bit of a tip for you uh, for current informal conversational English in the United States. Instead of when do you, when are you done with work or when do you stop working? We'll say, hey, when do you get off work? Say, ah, I get off at nine. So that's very typical in, in very typical conversational English. Good. Uh, Julissa? Second. From and until are used when referring to a start and end point in time, just like with from and to. I will be working from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. tonight. She is in Paris from June until July. Until can be also be used to talk about an end point in time when something stops. He will be working until 10 at night. Jack will be at the library until he finishes his assignment. It is common to hear people say till instead of until. Mm -hmm. And even though until is spelled with one L, whoever wrote this made a mistake. Actually, okay. now, and I was studying this for the heck of it a couple of days ago, and this word. Why double L? Uh, because actually, this word, if you study the etymology of it, this word actually comes before, uh, was been, has been spoken in English before. <coughs> so this is like till, and this is like up till, uh, until, until, you know. So they used to kind of have different word, different meanings. Now they're basically the same. But so really, this word came from this word. And I just learned that recently. In Old English, even in Shakespeare, they would use these words. Mm -hmm. And it also, yes, it also means cash register. <laughs> and it also means uh, soil, I think, till. Or uh, something something to do with soil. If you're farming, you can talk about till. But today we're going to talk about uh, the preposition till. Just a little bit of etymology. I love I love etymology. Um, let's look at the third point, um, Yevgeny. Mm, yeah, 
Third, through is used for movement in place and time. Through is place. I drove through New York to get to New Jersey. She walked th through the park. Through this time, Michael Jackson was popular through 2008. Mm -hmm. We worked through the night to finish the project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's through. Very good. Uh, okay, where's my. There we go. Okay, any questions about that? Or is it probably going to be? It's probably review for most of you. Um, so let's um, let's look at our um, our story, our article on on uh, reality TV, and you know again I, I'm not I'm not a fan of reality TV myself, but I think it's important to look at because it's one of the biggest uh, phenomena of uh, phenomena in, in pop culture today it's just taken the world by storm it's the latest craze and it started I think here in the United States but now everywhere I look they have these other shows that are just like like the ones oh, here free hmm like Oprah Winfrey show uh, maybe well Oprah Winfrey is more like a talk show talk show and the talk show is a little different than a reality TV. unless uh, Oprah has a new show that I don't know about but I think she had more of a talk show and talk shows are really big really popular and I like talk shows actually I, I uh, and I like late night shows uh, not that I watch them but sometimes online I'll see a clip but uh, reality TV is quite different than a talk show talk show format has a host and maybe an audience and then usually the hosts will invite guests to come up and they'll have an interview with guests and that's usually usually the format of a talk show um, so uh, but those are also really popular but they've been around for a very long time in our culture and in yours so but yeah Oprah is huge of course very popular we can say that we can use the word huge to mean uh, popular or big or something like that um, so yeah let's let's uh, let's read This comes from time. <clears throat> okay. Um, actually, if you want, I'll, I'll uh, send a link if you'd like to read along. Uh, uh, Anthony, can you share the link about the position? Excuse me? Uh, can you share the link about prepositions? Uh, I don't have a link for that. That wasn't a website. Uh, Sorry. That was just a file I have on my computer. Just. Uh, just, um, yeah, um, but you can keep this video. <laughs> this video will be on YouTube. You can watch it. Okay. But sorry, I don't have any kind of. Uh, I mean, I could send you the document, uh -huh. but I don't have a website. But there are many websites you could. Okay. okay. Are you afraid for copyrights? <laughs> what? Are you afraid because of copyright? <laughs> no, I just don't have. It's just not a website. <laughs> Yeah, so. Okay, um, let's look here. Uh, it's not always cool to watch reality TV shows. It's one thing to convey your erudition by dissecting a dark plot in The Sopranos, uh, but what it does reveal to cop a fascination uh, with Donald Trump's board boardroom or worse, uh, Ryan and Tristan's love affair on The Bachelorette. For closet reality TV fans, it may finally be safe to come out of the closet. On September, uh, on Sunday, September 21st, for the first time, the Emmys will award a statue for the best host of a reality TV show. To top that off, the event itself will be hosted by the five nominees. Tom Berg, Bergeron, Ryan Seacrest, Howie Mandel, Heidi Klum, and Jeff Probst. Clearly, everyone watches it, says Andy Denhart, uh, editor of the blog Reality Blurred, which follows and analyzes the reality TV genre. But everyone also thinks they have to say 
uh, they don't. Um, the potential of filming real people live their lives was not lost on the earliest entertainment honchos. Nightwatch, a popular radio serial in the early 1950s, followed a group of Culver City, California police officers on patrol and became the ancestor of another reality giant early on, cops. In 1973, an American family, a 12-part series that brought us the Santa Barbara, California Loud clan, broke new ground with its artful, excruciatingly real portrayal of a family in transition. With its unabashed in invasion into the private lives of the Louds, an exploration of taboo subjects like the divorce of parents Pat and Bill, and the open homosexuality of eldest son Lance, the seminal broadcast drew more than 10 million viewers and became a pop cultural landmark. Yet for all of its power, family was just not close to home. It was home. Then, in the wake of the late 80s Writers Guild of America strike that pushed desperate networks to learn to produce the cheap and easy reality fair, came 1992's The Real World. Like almost all of its emulators, from the Osbournes to the Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie vehicle, The Simple Life, to the biggest loser, couples, the real world, uh, explored what happened when, real, when people stopped being polite and started getting real. That was their tagline. But not too real. Slickly created and cast by pros, TRW was uh, placed seven 18 to 25-year-olds uh, from diverse backgrounds in a house of its choosing for at least a dozen shows worth of provocative banter. Its first season generated buzz with a fierce battle on race between a black writer and a moody, white, aspiring folk singer. As ratings, bona uh, ratings bonanza for MTV, the artificially authentic... I like that. TRW convinced network execs that the genre had a commercial brawn and set the stage for the first network reality mega hit, CBS's Survivor, and the endless stream of shows that followed. It's hard to pinpoint the precise draw of reality TV. There's the vicarious thrill of talent competitions like American Idol with its promise of stardom for shower singers. There's the rare chance to feel superior by tuning in to watch someone being voted out of a room. Most powerful is that, at their intimate best, the shows can out-dramatize fictional TV drama. And the real world's third season, 20-year-old Pedro Zamora, a gay educator, came out as HIV positive to his housemates, one of whom harassed him, uh, married a fellow AIDS educator, on camera and sparked an enduring national conversation. In a new series, Discovery's Ice Road Truckers, viewers are introduced to men who risk their lives in Northwest Canada, braving dangerous roads, frozen lakes, and whiteout conditions to bring supplies to diamond mines. Some reality shows are horrifying and trashy, and others are completely compelling and socially redeeming, says Denhardt. It's a varied genre just like the real world. Okay. What is commercial brawn? Because brawn for me is only food. <laughs> it's only... Uh, can you repeat? Uh, I, I wanted you to repeat. You said brawn for me is only what? Food. Ah. Um, I don't normally hear about it as food. Um, so I usually think of brawn as like, like great strength. I think. Yes, but uh, is commercial brawn commercial strength? Yes. So let's see. Where is it? Where do we have it here? Um, uh, um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, TRW convinced network execs that the genre had commercial brawn. Yes, commercial potential, great strength um, to be successful and lucrative. Mm -hmm. So, 
So, um, by the way, uh, the nice, uh, nice uh, uh, at on in time period that uh, time pyramid that Christoph linked. Nice. That could be useful for uh, for uh, uh, Liliana. Teacher, okay. what does in the wake of the late 80s mean? In the wake of the late. Yeah, in the wake of the, well, we want to say the whole phrase. The wake of the late 80s is one phrase. The wake of the late 80s. So the late 80s, is the late 1980s, right? 1986, 1987, 1987. Uh, in the wake of means like um, when you're on a boat, a motorboat or something, uh -huh. uh, and you're going in the, in the water, and the behind the boat you have this this like spray of water behind uh, this kind of trail of water in the in the, in the at the uh, in the end and um, that's called a wake. Uh, so a wake is it like a trail of splashes and water left by a fast boat. And so the wake of the 1980s is like. And what's left of the 1980s in the at the end at the end of the 1980s, so uh, this is kind of what the what the what the what what happened what they brought us. So in the late in the late 80s. Late 80s, yeah. So in the wake the wake of the late 80s, Writers Guild of America strike. So the actually, it's actually quite a long phrase. It's not just the wake of the late 80s. It's the wake. Of the late 80s Writers Guild of America strike. The, the wake of the late 80s Writers Guild of America strike. So we're talking about the strike that happened uh, where where TV writers stopped writing. So they're just saying because of this something new had to happen. We needed, we needed to come up with some new ideas. So because of this we came up with the real world. MTV came out with the real world which is a huge success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. That's that's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have uh, other. When mm -hmm. they say um, sparked, sparked uh, on and during national conversation, what does it mean? Okay, sparked. good. Um, so you can use a spark to start a whole fire, right? A little mm -hmm. spark. Um, a little spark will start a whole fire. So you can spark a conversation by having a little uh, uh, something little that will that will um, that will start a large uh, something large. Uh, a spark is a, the, a, a tiny beginning. Uh, uh, the beginning. Mm -hmm. And slicky, slicky created and cast by pros. Slicky created. So yes, slick um, is another word for um, like very fancy, very professional, very professional, very glossy, slick, like a slick news, uh, like a slick magazine where everything's shiny and fancy. So uh. slick created and cast by pros. Cast is um, you can cast a cast. So the cast of a TV show, the actors. Mm -hmm. In order to get the actors, you must first cast them. To be in your cast, so mm -hmm. the cast is a verb and a noun, same word. Mm -hmm. So oh, to get okay. the actors, to hire the actors, you must cast them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, pros. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other good questions or bad questions? Uh, okay. So let's. Um, Let's go back and talk about the article a little bit and try to keep in mind our uh, prepositions of place and time. Um, so when has reality TV been the most popular? Uh, what do you think? 90s, maybe. Like 92, yes. Uh, late, the late of uh, mm -hmm. 80s. Okay. So you think it was you think it was more popular in the, in the late eighties and nineteen nineties than it is now? Yes, music. Yes, it's more popular. Uh, okay. All right. Um, okay, that's maybe so. I don't know if I agree with that. I think it's. Uh, I think uh, reality shows are even more popular now. In my in my opinion, it seems like 
Um, they were popular then, but now they're even more popular. So, but, uh, so maybe you could say from the 90s until now. And, you know, when has it been popular? Maybe this whole time. You can say then and now. So maybe it's the same. Or I think they started to they started to be produced in 1992, mm -hmm. around 1992. Ah, okay. So maybe they started to be produced, uh, started to become popular in 1992. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was my next question, actually. When when was the real world popular? Well, uh, the, when when did it start? Is around 1992. But um, when was it, when was it popular? You could say. Um, how can you answer that? When was the real world popular? Not just 1992, but... You'd say through the 90s, maybe? Through the 1990s? But, bye, can I say bye? Mm. You can say by by as a preposition that can be used for time, but it has a different meaning. Now, um, if you say, if I call my friend and say, "Hey, I'm at the store. Um, I'll be home for dinner by 8. I'll eat, I'll eat time because can I say uh, I I write uh, I sent you a message by Facebook or by uh, email. Um, okay, yeah, sort of, you can say that, um, you can say, um, no, normally I would say I sent an, um, a message, I sent you an email, or I sent it by uh, using, uh, sent it with, sent it by Facebook. You don't usually say by Facebook, but you can say, um, I, I talk, I talk to you by Skype, mm -hmm. because I heard that, uh, that they say something like, like that. I would, I would say via, maybe via email, or, so you could send something via. Uh, that's another preposition, really. Um, uh, via, I sent it via, via, email. Yeah, via Facebook, via uh, Skype, via email. Um, now, I could say I sent it by airmail, uh, I sent it by post, sent it by carrier pigeon. <laughs> but, uh, I can no. say I, I talked to you by, by Skype. It's not, uh, I don't, we don't say that here, I, at least not in American English, not really. Uh, maybe British. No. It makes sense, but you usually just say on Skype. On the internet, on Facebook, um, we saw, when we talk about internet, um, internet type things, we usually use the preposition on. But I can understand where you're coming from because you're talking about not just being on the internet, but talking to mm -hmm. someone with yes. that tool. So I understand your question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can we use around with years, at around 1992, or just yeah. with time? How? Yeah, you absolutely can use it with years. Absolutely. You can say, like, I think somebody, I think you might have said. Uh, yeah, but I was not sure <laughs> if it was right. correct. I would have corrected you if it wasn't, because this is our topic today. So you can say, yeah, the real world uh, started around 1992. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can even say started around the 1990s, if it's really vague, if you really don't know. So, yeah, yeah. you can use it for years. In general, the 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if you really don't know, talking about when was Gothic architecture popular? Oh, around the 14th, 15th century, or, you know, so you can really use a big, big time. Um, By so, the way, uh, what is the the first reality show which has become most popular in the world? In the American world? American Idol. I think American Idol. Um... I think who wants to be a millionaire, I think, but I don't know. Mm. Is I don't know if who wants to be a millionaire would count as a reality show or not. Do they That's interview the, the contestants when they leave? Because if they did, then it would be almost a reality show, but I don't think they do. It's a do. contest. It's more, it's more just a game show, a very, you know, very blown up, very dramatic game show. Hmm. Now, Survivor... The American Idol is competition, too, like X Factor. It's yeah, competition, but, too. Yeah, it is, but it's different because it's it's in the style of uh, of reality show because they, they talk to the person and they and they have all the, you know, the, the drama that happens. It's not just a game show. It's not just a talent show, but there's all this extra reality that happens, uh, which is a little different than uh, uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. But, yeah... Um, 
Yeah, American Idol was huge, or still is huge. I think. A Voice is a big one now. Mm. Um, I haven't, yeah, I've rarely seen these. But... Britain's Got Talent, uh -huh. American Got Talent. Mm -hmm. Indonesia's Got Talent, do you have that? <laughs> of course, but not really popular. <laughs> uh -huh, I knew it. See, that's what I'm saying. Every uh, yes. Well, the, the most popular is Indonesian Idol and, yeah, and, yeah X Factor. It's uh -huh. new, right? Uh huh. But I don't like to watch it. It just influences uh, people to <laughs> to send me sets <laughs> to spending money. Oh, uh, really? To support their artists. Uh, I don't like it. Oh, interesting. Um. So, what about um? Now I know. Evgeny, you don't really watch TV much anymore, but you can still probably answer this question because it's just a general question. But uh, mm -hmm. where do the uh, contestants of Survivor uh, participate? Where do they uh, participate? In contestants? Mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean? Um, so uh, in um, when you have a game show or people playing a game, the members of the game are contestants because it's a contest. Contestant. Contest. Like participants. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Like it's better to use contestants. Mm -hmm. And what is the question? Oh, where do the participants, uh, where do the contestants participate in Survivor? Where do they, where do they go? Oh, <laughs> I really don't know. You can make it up. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. What do you mean, contestant? If they lose or winning or what? Oh, any, all the members are always, they're called just contestants. Any of the members that are playing are contestants. Winners and losers are different, uh, but they're all contestants because they're all um, competing. So, um, yeah, we could just say um, they go to exotic places in the world, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Like right, the frozen right. lakes in Canada. The frozen lakes. Oh, really? <laughs> Maybe so. And if they lose, they're crying, uh, <laughs> and yeah. drama begins. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I uh, desert island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, does anyone here um, like make a rule for themselves before they watch TV? Like, um, do you have any like um, rules that you have to do a certain some work or something before you get to watch TV? Rules? Rules? What do you mean? Well, I, I was just trying to see if anyone like says, well, I don't ever let myself watch TV until I've done the dishes. Uh. Oh. <laughs> I think it doesn't work. <laughs> so, just seeing if anyone had done. But you guys just watched TV. Whatever. But that would be a good, uh, uh, that'd be a good use of the preposition until. I don't allow myself... Okay. I can watch it whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. But sometimes we sometimes we put rules on ourselves, right? Like a lot of you guys don't need to learn English, but you're doing it yourselves. You're 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 asserting self discipline already. So so it's possible. Uh, okay. All right. So let's go through the room and do some assessment before we adjourn. Um, oops. Um, so, um, Julissa. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, I would like to ask you um, to make a sentence using um, from, and, or, to. Let me type that because that's a little confusing.
So from and or to. Using the country um, Australia. Any sentence. Okay. I, I will fly from I will fly from to arrive to, to Australia. I need to fly from Chile to I don't know <laughs> Singapore, maybe to Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, Christoph. Yes. What about um, use the same possible words to and or from using both of these words? Tuesday and Wednesday, both. Uh, oh, I have to have from, to, and Tuesday and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You can and you can choose uh, from or to or you can use both. Uh, okay, I have train uh, from Gliwice to Katowice uh, in uh, Tuesday, but I arrived um, to Katowice in Wednesday. Okay. Uh, okay. So you use uh, the from and to from the uh, as a place, and then uh, okay, that works. Good. Oh, did you say I have trained? I have trained. Okay. I have the train. Uh, I have the train. I, I have, have the train. train. Okay, like a ticket or like a uh, like a schedule or a, uh, a plan to be on the train. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I wanted to make sure I understood you. Okay. Good. Because you can't you can't say trained. I thought you said trained, but you said have a train. Okay. Um, Liliana. Yes. This one. Uh, let's try to use through. And talk about um, the United States. Okay. Um. I uh, I I will rent a car. Uh, to, to travel through uh, the north part of the United States. Okay. Uh, you want to use um, the infinitive to drive through. Uh, okay. I will rent a car to drive through the United States, the Great. north of the United States. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I'll rent a car to drive through the northern part of the United States. You usually say northern would be better, I think, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Um, this one's even harder, Cheche. Uh, what if we use through in the... Oh, uh, no, I don't really understand that using through. Oh. How can we talk about through using our month today? What, what month is it? July? So how can we use through and talking about uh, July? Oh. <laughs> how can I use it? <laughs> Why do you give me the hard? <laughs> oh, because you're my favorite. I'm going to make it nice and hard. <laughs> oh, no. Um, how about, so just try it. Just try something, and then if it's wrong, it's wrong, and then I'll help you. I'm sorry. Usually through, uh, we can u usually through for what? Mm -hmm. um, so um, now when you talk about through as a preposition, you can go through the tunnel, right? Or through, uh, you go through something, go through something like that. It's through. So how can you say that in time? If you think about, we talked about, um, I said that the real world, the TV show, the real world was popular through the 90s, through the 1990s. So all the way through the decade. So what about, how can you use through when talking about July? 
I have a boring day through July. <laughs> <laughs> you've had a you've had a boring you've had boring days through July through July. All right, through you can say that. I've had boring days all through July. You could say all through July I've had boring boring life. Well that's too bad. <laughs> 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 all right, good, good, good. And teacher uh, mm -hmm. can I say through all through all July, for yes. example? There, yeah. there will be a festival in my city through all July. Yes, throughout. You can say, all throughout July, I've been bored. All through July. Or there's a festival in my city through July. Or throughout. I think both are the same in this case. Throughout might be actually better. I like that. Throughout July. What, what well, but not. Uh, but not through, through all, through, hmm. all, through all July. Mm -hmm. You can say that too. I say that sometimes, through all July. Or all through, I say all through, actually. All through. Uh, through, or throughout, they have the same meaning. You can use uh, yeah. Yeah. the same. All through or throughout, the same thing. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you have gain? Is it safe with oh. as long as throughout? Uh, the same meaning like as long as uh, right. as far as like that? No, as far as is different. That's a very different term. We'll, we can talk about that another day. But uh, so that's a different one. Um, so Yevgeny, how about if you want to use um, by, the word by or until? Let's see, either one you choose. And talk about uh, nine o'clock. Make a sentence for me. Okay. Um, I'll be I'll be learning English at Kalingo since uh, nine p.m. until midnight. Okay. Uh, so. You can say I have been learning uh, English on Kalingo since 9 p.m. But if you put oh. it until after, then you say another um, uh, preposition. So if I if I'm talking about future, I shouldn't use since. Um, well, if you're gonna be yeah, if you're gonna t do like a series of times um, since, um, you want to say if you want to have two different times, then you say then you use from. And until you could say from until, so you could say I have uh, I st I studied English in Colingo from uh, 9 p.m. until uh, midnight. So so you were almost perfect. I just you would use from instead of since. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So since works if you just say uh, in general if you only use the one time like uh, like what have you been doing lately, Evgeny? And you could say. Oh, I've been I've been working on my English since nine o'clock. You can say that, but okay. when you add another time to it, then you want to say from this from. Point to this point. Okay. Just, like, just like on a map, you go from Moscow to Nizhny Novgorod. So you have like these two points on a map. Uh, okay. Anthony, uh, yes. I can say by eight uh, p.m. I will be arriving home. Say that again. By nine. I'm sorry. By eight. Uh, PM, I'll be arriving home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I would switch the phrases to be better. I would say uh, I'll be uh, I'll be arriving home by 8 p.m. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. And that means no later than 8. That means mm -hmm. it won't be later than 8. It'd be somewhere up until 8. So maybe 7:55, maybe 7:58, maybe 8 o'clock, but not later. By. Okay, it's better to say I will be arriving by 8. Right. Yep. Okay. Definitely. Very good. Good job, guys. Really good. Um, so that's our class on on uh, reality TV and uh, prepositions of time and place. So reality teaching. Reality. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is reality teaching. Yeah, sort of. Reality real learning. The real life. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, A reality net speaker. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I have a few more classes uh, tonight if you guys are awake or want to hang out. Um, so join me if you can. And uh, again, good job and hope to see you soon.
Okay. Thank okay. you, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. See you next time. Bye. 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 See you.